It's with a very special delight that I welcome you to this class relative to human illness and divine healing. Whether I like it or not or appreciate it or not, uh, when I leave this earth, I will be remembered as a person of faith. That will be because I went out to preach when I was 17 with 65 cents in my pocket and never thought about how much I had until a few years later. Someone said, how much did you have? And you started out to preach. And, and uh, it didn't bother me at all. And that I had $12 when I started off around the world to be a missionary without any appointment from any denomination or any relationship with any church of any kind. And that when we built things, both in this country and others, that we would start with zero. We, we started building the largest Protestant church in the Philippines and had no money at all. We just, all we had was a little grit and grace and uh, we were using both of them as well as we could. And, and when the building, which is still the largest uh, sanctuary in the, in, the, in the nation, was completed, it was all paid for. And, and just to point out the miracles of it would take a whole, a whole evening of, of study. And so all during our whole life, we, we have trusted God and, and taught faith until people expect me to be a person of faith. And that's all I want to be, is a person of faith. And faith is very closely related uh, to, to human illness and divine healing. In this lesson, uh, we are first going to stress that the present day, in our day, needs healing. Our world is sick. In our world that we live in today, we have more physicians than in any other period of time in the history of mankind. We have more nurses attending the physicians and helping the sick than the world has ever known at any, at any time in the history of the world. We have more hospitals than the world has ever known in, in, its, in its entire history. We have more science, greater science, better science, uh, more technology in, in helping the sick than we ever had in the history of the world. Every moment there's a new invention that comes to help somebody in a, in a, in a greater way machines that are so delicate that can, that can help the human being. And so we have more medical help than in the history of mankind, but the problem is the world is still sick. The world is still sick. And the, the problem is the world is still sick. This causes the people of the world to become confused. Oftentimes, uh, people that hear like you do, they don't know whether to trust in medical science with its drugs, or a surgeon, with a scalpel, or a psychiatrist, with his mental analysis, or an osteopath or chiropractor, readjusting the, the bones and the organs of the body, or if they should just simply trust Jesus for their healing. Now there are millions of people in that, in that area. And I want to tell you very candidly, if tonight or any other time that I feel that I need a doctor, I will certainly call for one immediately, that I, I, have, I have nothing but admiration. If I were not a minister, I certainly would want to be a doctor. I'd want to alleviate human suffering. If there's anything that, that I want to do on the face of this earth, it's, humans, it's to alleviate human suffering. Uh, when the last world war broke out, the next morning, I went right down to the recruiting office and said, I'd like to, I'd like to join, please and I would like to be an assistant to a doctor. And they asked me my age, said the war would have to go in a long time before we need you, that you go back, you go back and do whatever you're doing. So I walked out of there pretty sad because I was ready to go. I, I wasn't married and I was ready to go, except they said it'd be a long time before they got to my age. Miracles can make the world realize the power of God, as I've already taught you in this class. When we have the power of God demonstrated in the world that we live in today to heal people, it can do something to our world that we live in. Miracles, miracles can always uh, cause faith to come in the multitudes of hearts. There are millions of people that have faith in God this moment because they saw a miracle of God. They were suddenly convinced that God was real, that religion was real when they saw a miracle. Uh, this world though it may have its uh, uh, 
its quota of unbelief and doubt, it needs a faith rekindle. And faith can be rekindled by God doing the unusual, the unnatural, and the miraculous. And so we are not only talking about a physical healing, which is a good thing, but we're talking about it being used to bring multitudes to God. I don't know of anything that can cause a faith in God to come like the power of miracle. It, it, it is an amazing thing to me how it, can, how it can be used. In Calcutta, India, uh, uh, an Indian man, beautiful person, tall and strong and straight, and had his religion dotted on, the, on his forehead here. And he had heard that where I was preaching that there were miracles being performed. And he brought a, his little son that couldn't walk. His feet dangled like this. They, had, they, 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 they wouldn't hold him up. He had never walked in his life. And when I would give the call for sinners to come to the altar, he would come with the sinners. Of course, he was one. He was a Hindu. But he, he would hold this little helpless child up to me. And with the most pathetic face, he stood over six foot and, and was higher than the, most of the people there. And he would just stand with this little one up in his, higher than the people's heads. And uh, I would pray with all of them. And then I'd lean over and tell him, you come back tomorrow night. Now you say, why would you ask that? I knew that if I prayed for that child, very likely it would not get healed. And then if it did get healed, I would never see him again. He would have gotten all he came for, and that was a healing. The next night we gave the altar call. He was there. He brought the little child up, and there was the little child in, in, in his arms, helpless little thing, a little, little boy, looked like he might be four or five years old. And, and, and again, he held him out to me, and I leaned over and I smiled and I said, uh, you come back tomorrow night. Now, I don't normally do people like that. That's not my normal procedure. Uh, but uh, with this man, I brought him back for three nights without saying anything to the child. And the, on the last night, I said, you've heard me minister three times. Are you ready to receive Jesus as your Savior? And tears came in his eyes. And he said, yes, I, I would. I said, put the child down. See, the, 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 his problem was in the child. He just put the child on the floor like I told him to. And I said, now raise your hands like this. And I gave him the sinner's prayer. And Jesus began to come into his heart. His face began to light up with a light it had never had before. And, and as he began to rejoice in the Lord, he suddenly said, oh, where, where is my child? And he looked around and it was walking across the floor over on the other side. When he had made the right commitment with God, God made a right commitment with him. The, 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 the supernatural is in both, in both areas. For, for a Hindu to confess Jesus Christ, see, they have 300 million gods. And for him to give up all the gods that, that, uh, in, in the temples and say, I receive the Lord Jesus as my one God, my Lord, my Savior. At that moment when he did that, the other thing took place without my praying. I never prayed for the child. But God saw his sincerity and saw that he wanted to serve him. And you see, that man's soul was more important than the child's body. And that man's soul was very important. And when that child was touched and he looked, you can't imagine a man having as much joy as that man went home with that night. He had a twofold blessing. He had a newborn soul within him and a new spirit within him and a new child that God touched that child and that was walking across the floor uh, without his helping it uh, when, he, when he saw it. God will reach down and, and match our faith. But our faith, Jesus said, go and sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you. But when the Lord does miracles, he specifically wants us to serve him at that point. And if you don't serve him, uh, Jesus says that what you receive won't remain with you. In fact, it might get worse. When you're dealing in the supernatural and you're dealing with God, God wants fidelity and God wants sincerity and God wants truth and God wants love because God is love and God wants love and God expects love uh, to come from you and to come from me. Healing can bring relief to suffering humanity. Millions are in pain every moment of the day or the night all over the world. I can never forget, my wife and I went up into the jungles of South America up the great Amazon River 
And we had about a thousand people there. And I said, how many want to be prayed for that are sick? We didn't have six people left in their seats. I said, you don't mean you're all sick, do you? And so I began to take them by diseases and, and, and to pray for them. And in that jungle area there, uh, where, where there is so much sickness and fevers of all kinds, almost everybody, now they had hospitals and they had doctors and they had nurses, but they were all sick. And we had a time, we had a time of praying and blessing and healing those people by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Disease ravages the bodies of the old, the young, the rich, the poor, the educated, the ignorant, the king, the slave. It don't matter who you are. There are multiplied millions. This very moment while we're sitting in our class learning here that are suffering right now, then Jesus is a master physician. He can heal any kind, every kind of disease known among men. There's where our trust is. There's where our faith is. So what is healing? Healing is the recovering of an abnormal physical or emotional aberration in the human person. Man was created, and this is what you have to get back to, man was created to live forever. He was to know no sickness. He was to know no pain. He was to know no death. He was made to live forever. Sickness is only death. That's what it is. It is limited death. When you're sick a little, you're dead a little. You're sick a lot, you're dead a lot. You get too sick and we bury you. <laughs> then we understand that the origin of sickness began with transgression. It began with breaking the laws of it. It did not come normally. It did not come naturally. Sickness is not the natural condition of a human being. If you can ever get that in your heart, you'll love this divine healing. When you come to know that sickness is not an, a normal situation that all people get sick, they don't. There are people that live from babyhood until they die at 85 years old and never get sick. Transgression, rebellion against God, is seated in the origin of sickness. With God, man's triunity is one, whether you're spirit or soul or body. His compassion is total. It's total in your personality, and it's total for the world in which we live today. Now, healing is a recovery from some sort or kind of illness or weakness. And that's all we accepted for. It is a recovery. It is health unlimited that God wants to give us. We do not, we do not presume to be involved in what the world calls faith healing. Faith in ourselves, faith in our words, faith in the human structure. We do not participate in such a thing. We do not believe in it. Faith healing is not one of the doctrines that we teach. We teach divine healing. We do not be, believe that a man's mind can reach out there and heal you. We, we teach healing coming from the one that died on Calvary by his stripes were healed. And that is the only healing that we teach. We teach that there can be a divine intervention into your need, into your problem, and that Jesus Christ can reach out there. Like it said in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 12, they that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick need a physician. And Christ is that physician. In Mark 5 and 34, Jesus said unto her, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of your disease. Healing is a restoration to health. That's what healing is all about. Healing is a victory. In Luke chapter 13 and verse 11, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. Isn't that something? She had a spirit of infirmity. She had it for 18 years. She was bowed together with it. She could no wise lift up herself at all. And Jesus says, I'll heal her. Hmm. In verse 16, Jesus said, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, 
Isn't that a terrible thing? There are many people in our world today that actually Satan hath bound them. If all of us could have seen the, the, the little, well, he, he was still little, the 18-year-old youth that we prayed for last week, you would have hated Satan, you would have resisted him to see how terrible he destroys and, and medical science so they couldn't find one thing wrong with the boy at all. And not just one place, but many in some of the finest uh, clinics and hospitals in the land. Woman that's a daughter of Abraham, you know, she, she was on the believer's side, you know, she was a believer. Whom Satan hath bound 18 years, be loosed from her, this bond, even on a, on a holy day. Even on a holy day. <laughs> There's some people that are so funny, you know. I, I, I've met preachers that say, well, if one person comes to me and says, I need healing, I'll pray for them, but says, I won't ever take a line of them. Well, pray tell me what's the difference whether there's one or six, you know? Whether there's a line of them or whether there's one of them. Oh, he oh, said, I would be classed a healer if I had a line. But says, if they come to me individually, I'll pray for them to be healed. Well, I want to tell you something. I'll pray in a line as long as I'm here to the moon. If, if, if I can get people out there that need to be healed, and pray for them in Jesus' name because the Lord wants anybody and everybody to receive his life and his strength and his healing. Can you say amen? amen. Also in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 22, it says, Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil. He was blind. He was dumb. Isn't that amazing that the Satan had brought blindness and dumbness to him? And Jesus healed him insomuch that the blind and the dumb both spake and saw. If you will bear with me while I tell you about the, the boy that I prayed for last week. His eyes were just about closed. Within five minutes, his eyes were as large as they had ever been. And in the evening when I saw him, his eyes were clear, wide open. And... Uh, they had thought he was blind because his eyes were closed on him. God just opened those things right up and he could see anybody that he wanted to tell you anything you wanted, wanted to know about them. When the Lord comes in, he does a, a healing measure in our hearts and lives. If you know it, say amen. amen. If there are more people in our world that we live in today sick than ever before in history, when we have more medicine and better medicine, we have highly trained physicians, many of them beautiful Christian people. Modern hospitals, modern clinics, sophisticated instruments to work with, futuristic technology, and we still have more, pe more people that are sick than ever before. Those who are sick are not just in the backward, undeveloped countries of the world. We often think that in primitive places of the world they have more illness than they have anywhere else. Well, you try to get in the doctor's office tomorrow and you'll find out some. Yeah, that there are lots of people right here with the poor sanitary conditions, the inferior food, and, and, and not very many modern conveniences. The increase in illness is not limited to such areas of overcrowded population, severe climate, or ignorance of superstition. Illness and suffering runs rampant in the world's so-called advanced nations. Most hospitals are so overcrowded that they have to put patients out in the halls. We've seen it so many times. People jam into the doctor's office and wait for hours they're looking for help. Billions of dollars are spent by the sick and the suffering each year in their struggle to get well all over the world. Many of the sick get worse and the pain is intensified. So the good news of Jesus that he came to this earth to heal is the best news that they ever heard. He was and he is a healer for mankind. Acts 10 and 38 says it this way, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Went about doing good. Don't you like that? Healing all that were oppressed, for God was with him. When the Lord Jesus designed and showed his, his ministry in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, he said of himself, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives. He has sent me to bring recovering of sight 
to the blind. He has sent me to set at liberty them that are bruised. Jesus taught by his word and by his example that there is not a prepackaged routine for receiving one's healing. Now that you have to know. He did not anoint everybody with oil. He did not lay hands on everybody. He did not put mud in everybody's eyes. In so doing, the Lord Jesus showed us that all healing is divine, regardless of the method that is employed. And though he did not do it uh, in the same way every time, it was the same source of power. In our country, for some reason or another, we have a feeling that most healing has to be with the laying on of hands. Now, the, almost the greatest miracles that I have ever seen, nobody touched that person. They, 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 we have seen people set free from demon power, and I never got close to them. I merely said, come out of them, and they were instantly delivered by God's power. And in Brother T.L. Osborne's meetings, where there would be 100,000 converts or, or more than that, Many times the healings would take place uh, 40,000 people back and somebody would start praising God and shouting and he'd say, bring up the one you're shouting over. And then when they'd get up to the front, then he would show them, this person the Lord healed. They were standing away in the back when I said, receive the healing of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in our country, uh, in my meetings that I hold, I get weary uh, with the people sometimes. How many forgive me for that? <laughs> but I want them to have faith in God and not in me. I want them to have faith in what Jesus can do and not in my hand. Now, we have certain evangelists that said, I feel something in my hand. And maybe they do feel a little something in their hand. But I want to tell you now, nobody's hand ever healed anybody. Uh, and and, and, and yeah, nobody's hand ever died for anybody. <laughs> and nobody's hand ever rose again either. Uh, that we, we are dealing with a master subject and we want to deal with it in the correct way and in the proper way. And as Jesus illustrated in his ministry, that there's no one way to receive your healing. Uh, but there are many. And the, the core of it is your faith. If thou shalt believe, you shall receive it. And if you believe, you shall have it. As many of you know, uh, my mother... When I was a, a small child, maybe seven or eight years old, uh, she had cancer of the breast. Now, there possibly no other disease as bad as cancer today. It is a killer. It is a destroyer. And when this little sore began and became very, very delicate until she couldn't stand even for a piece of cloth to touch it, and she went to the doctor and they, they said, it's, it's cancer, it's fast moving. It soon became the size of a silver dollar and, and had a depth to it that you could put your finger down in. Uh, it, it looked like a crater of a volcano with evil inside of it, red and angry looking. It was an awful looking, awful looking thing. Of course, the, the doctors said we, all that we know to do is to cut it out, which would be the total breast. And we don't, we don't know that you can... Uh, that it might spread. We, don't, we can't guarantee that. And my mother said, oh, I, I just can't give in to it. And she prayed. Now, she was not full gospel. She was Methodist. And, and she prayed. And she said, God, will you heal? Will you heal uh, this, th this cancer? And my mother says that one night, as she was sleeping, she doesn't know whether it was a vision or, 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 a, or a dream, that Jesus came into her room and reached, stood at the foot of the bed and reached out and he touched her uh, with his finger. And the next day she told my father, who was very skeptic and not converted uh, about it, and he just, you know, brushed it off. But two or three days later, he, he, he says, Betty, he said, you haven't said a word about that, that cancer in the last day or two. He says, is it worse or better? She said, you know, I'd forgotten it. You know, you can get healed and, and forget your problems, you know. She, and she went into the bathroom and, and, and she removed all that big bandage the doctor had put on there and laid it back just in time because 
The cancer with its head and all of its tendrils was lying over in, 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 into, the, into the gauze. And, and she took a mirror and looked, and there was a fine layer of skin that had already gone all the way across. And in a few days, it became stronger and stronger, like new little baby skin. Now, she lived 45 years or more after that, never had cancer anywhere in her body. But when you're brought up in a home like that, it does something to you on your insides until the devil can come with anything he wants to. And you say, well, look, wait a minute. We, we, we've seen cancer healed at our house. We can tackle this too, you know? It gives you an aggressive spirit toward, toward the devil and toward evil and toward disease or toward anything else. But I was reared in that. And my mother, uh, soon after that, received the infilling of the Holy Spirit and, and would testify, not once, but any time you got close enough to her and would stay long enough, you got it. <laughs> she was eager to tell people what Jesus had done and, and healing something that, you know, had no psychology uh, uh, effort with it, you know. You know, it, it wasn't something you, like a headache that it may or may not be there. It was a hole that God covered up. And, and it was a hurting that God took away. And so in our family, we came to know the power of healing while we were young. And that's the reason we can speak so positively about it. We've known it and we've loved it.